Can Thomas George Bridewell do anything to, to bridge that gap? Well, I tell you what, he's put himself in the right place with the yeah. right amount of laps to go. He has. We're on the 24th of 26. Just two more laps after this one to decide the outcome. <laughs> oh, love it. Bridewell beginning to look very, very threatening now. Having said that, the last lap was Andy Irwin's fastest lap of his race on bike number 18. Yeah, he's doing what he has to do to stay with his brother. And his brother, Glenn, has decided he's going to put the hammer down and go as fast as he can now, because that's all he can do. So, number two, Glenn Irwin, who, uh, remember, uh, has not won the British Superbike since uh, the brand's GP. Oh, Bridewell! Oh, oh, Bridewell, big moment! He goes straight on across the gravel. It's going to be a long while before he gets back on track there, is it? Yeah, he's back on track, but he's way down now. He's dropped the, That bunch is going to get by him easily before Redgate. The two vision track to cut his take advantage, and, uh, and it's Brooks who's on the move. Brooks, who was still lapping pretty quickly, I noticed a couple of laps ago. Let's have a look. What happened. Third man and shot, just coming down the outside. And that's a little bit unlucky for Bridewell because perfectly within his right, Sandy Irwin went right to the stripe on the outside whilst on the brakes to get a good line into the chicane, and that just upset Bradwell a little bit and now Andy Irwin is pushing oh. and that's not the place to do it no, <laughs> no. <laughs> the voice of experience <laughs> and uh, Jason O'Halloran must be wondering what he's looking at in well, third place Jason I know what he's thinking he's thinking I might just end up winning this without passing anybody so right howling on to that uh, this is the penultimate attempt at going down to the final chicane and again you've got to remember that andy will come right back to the left as they go down the hill well he looks to the inside just in case something happens to his brother yes. on the brakes and then when that's not happened he, he swaps across to the left to get a good line into the chicane Buchan's in danger Buchan's right here we go danger. this is it now Kyle Wright comes on the inside of Danny Buchan as he tries, and he does needle his way through into Redgate. That's a fourth place now for the build-based Suzuki. That's a cracking result for that boy, and he's come from way down as well. And as they go it, storming down... Here we go, here this is... Oh, oh, oh he's put oh, wide, he's put really wide there. It, and that... I'll tell you what, Glenn's got to ride defensive now. Your leader, Glenn Irwin's got to ride defensive. But how does he deal with Andy when he goes down to the final chicane? He got nailed there last time, last mm. race. He's got to stay on the inside a little bit, but even then, he can't stop right on the inside. There still might be a little bit of room for Andy. So as they go up the hill towards Coppice then, the final lap of a dramatic second round of the Venice. Andy Irwin's going, he's going, he's, going. he's not going to wait. He's not going to wait. Oh, and he did I'm, get him signed. I've never seen anything like that. And then, and there's nothing. Glenn can Glenn run the outside of him. Oh, I'm losing the power of speech. And Glenn gets himself in a mess. Here comes O'Halloran. O'Halloran gets down the outside to try and destroy the Honda one. And Glenn Club gets back to second. Oh. He's back into second place. So the Irwin boys do it again. And the Irwin. No, he's Jeff, going. He's, going. he's not going to wait. He's not going to wait. Oh, and he I'm, did get him signed. I've never seen anything like that. And then, and there's nothing. Glenn can Glenn rather than sixth place out of Tara McKenzie <laughs> and Christian Eden, <laughs> Bridewell and Barbara. Uh, well, there's uh, Neil McKenzie uh, there. Con uh, congratulates everybody on that uh, that result then for McCams Yamaha back in the business, but for Harvey Beltran and the and the Honda camp, wow. For those Irwin boys, it doesn't come any nearer to complete disaster for the pair of them. Through nobody, none of them's fault, they both had a go. I think we might be seeing that again somehow. The race winner then for the second time and is 25-year-old Andy Irwin. Andy Irwin didn't want to wait till the chicane. Look, so he has a go, and this is this is this is coming out of coppice. Wow. He's got he's got the lead, he's got the lead there, but it he, he meant he wasn't as quick out of that corner, which meant Glenn could go down the outside again. Andy commits to the inside, can't really get it stopped. Leaves his oh. brother like two inches of road to stay on. A Halloran at this point thinking, I'll have a bit of that, thank you very much, boys. And, uh, and Jason must have thought he got second at that point, but uh, yeah, Glenn, and, oh, look, he did get round the outside. Yeah, but don't worry about Glenn going off track, exceeding track limits because he was helped out there. He was pushed out there, so that won't count. There'll be no penalty for that. <laughs> 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 Javier hey, Beltran, has he got the one-two again? Have they got one to the one-two again? Uh, have they half, have they? Yes. Well, relief. <laughs> So the Honda Garage can uh, celebrate once again. That was uh, quite a quite a result. Abs 
I was glad he took his angina pill this morning, otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>